Hello, this is Dutch and welcome to Redstone for Beginners, Lesson 2. In this lesson we will be talking about um, some more blocks that I did not explain last time, which uh, can be powered using Redstone, as well as another Redstone component, and we will be um, finishing the last of the logic gates, and we will also be delving into um, memory, so basically ways in which you can store information in Minecraft. Only the very basics of memory though, nothing too complicated. So let's get started. Over here I have a bunch of stuff set up in order to demonstrate uh, what redstone interaction can do with these blocks. Now first of all we have doors. This is fairly basic. However iron doors cannot be opened manually and regular doors can. So if you want a door that can only be opened by a switch or a pressure plate or whatever, then you want these. Um, hatches can also be powered by redstone, as can fence gates. And over here we have uh, pistons. Now, pistons are really useful and we are going to be using them a little bit further into this, vid into this video. Um, but basically what you need to know, a piston is basically just an arm that will extend and with this you can move blocks. There are two kinds of pistons, sticky pistons, which is this one, and regular pistons. A regular piston will push a block but it will not pull a block and a sticky piston will push a block and then pull it back again. So that's the difference between regular pistons and sticky pistons. Now over here we have redstone repeaters. Um, last episode I talked about easier ways of extending a signal well, this is how you do that. Um, as you can see, this is more than 15 blocks, yet if I pull this, the signal will still reach the end because it's going through a repeater. Now, some general stuff about repeaters. You can change the delay on it, which I will demonstrate further over here. Basically, each um, different setting accounts for 0.1 second. So this is a 0.1 second delay, 0.2 second, 0.3 second, and 0.4 second. Um, they are also um, not, uh, they are one directional, so if I were to remove this and put the torch here, then the power will not go through this way. So that's another important thing. Now over here I will um, demonstrate the delay. If I pull this lever, you can see it takes a little while for the lamp to go on, and same when it goes off. However, if I put these all on 0.4 seconds, you will see that there is a significant increase in the delay. See, that took uh, pretty long. This is 8 times 0.4, so that's a couple of seconds of delay, 3.2. So yeah, that's basically all you need to know about repeaters. Now, last time we talked about uh, OR gates and not OR gates. This is a XOR gate or an exclusive OR gate. Basically what that means is that uh, the output will only be on if one of the inputs is on. So if I pull one of these levers, then you can see the output here is on. But if I turn the other one on as well, then it will be off again. And if I turn this one off, it will, be, it will turn back on, and now it's off. So the way you build this is basically uh, you make use of a modified version of the AND gate. Um, this is set up differently because you want to be able to get the individual um, outputs inverted, and you need to use those as well as uh, the output of the AND gate itself. So basically what this is doing is making sure that um, if you pull one of these levers, then this will go off, which will make the output turn on. However, when you pull them both, the uh, AND gate will light up, which in turn will cause both of these sides to, to turn on. So these inverters here, or NOT gates, will make sure that the output is off when both levers are turned on. So that's basically how it works. I'm not sure if that was completely clear, but as long as you understand what this gate does, you should be able to use it. And with this, we can do some um, pretty interesting stuff. 
Like for example, say you have a doorway like this, you could have two levers and you can walk through and you will always be able to open and close this from both sides um, because of the way that these levers are set up. Because levers have two stable states, you know, they can be on and they can be off. So you will always be able to regulate whether the door is on or open or closed from either side considering that no matter what you do, the levers will either be both on or both off, or one of them will be on. So you can use that to control a door like this, and uh, this is the setup I have here. It's not really going to win any beauty prizes, but as you can see, here is just the um, XOR gate, and then the output leads under here to the double doors. So over here we have, um, I should say, next Next we're going to talk about memory. And ooh, these signs should actually um, say some stuff. We've got to set those up again. There's this bug in the latest snapshot. Um, yeah, this is your output. Basically what this is is a memory cell. So uh, it's called an RS NOR latch, and I will explain why it is called as such in a moment. This is your inverse output, and this is the reset. All right, so this is an RS NOR latch. Now, it's called that because uh, these are basically two NOR gates, which are connected to each other, and you have a set and they reset and that is what the R and the S stand for. So basically what you have going on here is you have one uh, NOR gate and the output of that leads into another NOR gate which output also leads into the first NOR gate. So basically if you uh, were to provide power to the set it means that the output here will turn on and the inverse output will turn off and if I were to provide power to the reset here it will change that back around again so you always have your output and your reverse output or inverse output over here and that's basically what an RS NOR latch is you could also make an RS NAND latch but that would be unnecessarily big because NOR gates are simply a lot smaller than NAND gates in Minecraft. Uh, the NOR and the NAND are universal gates. Basically every circuit can be created using either a NOR gate or a NAND gate. It wouldn't really always be the most efficient thing but you could do it. So yeah that's the RS NOR latch and using that we can make something like this which is basically a one-way door. You push the button, the door opens and you walk through on the pressure plate and the door closes and you won't be able to get back because this is just the uh, reset. So basically the set here powers the door so you can walk through it, it gets reset and there is no way to set the door again on this side so it will stay closed and you basically have a one-way door and of course there's lots of other stuff you could use this for but I'm sticking to the door theme for this lesson okay so what we have over here is a T flip-flop um, basically what this is is a toggling device if I press this button once the light goes on if I press it again the light turns off as you can see here we made use of a piston and that is because um, you could actually make a um, T flip flop out of just redstone and torches, but that would be a pretty big circuit, so it's pretty unwieldy, and this is just a way more compact solution. Uh, so we're going to use this, and it makes use of a quirk that pistons have, that if you supply a one tick pulse, so that would be, uh, in this case, a 0.1 second, I believe. I, I, I forget if it's an actual in-game tick or a redstone tick because 
basically 0.1 seconds is two ticks a game tick is uh, 0 0.05 seconds but people usually refer to the redstone delays as ticks as well so I'm actually not really sure if they mean a redstone tick or an in-game tick but um, yeah basically if you only supply power to a sticky piston for a very short amount of time it will push a block but not pull it with it again so you can use that in order to move this block which would if it's over here it would supply power and if it's not it won't so that's how this works basically um, I'll give you yeah, can't press the button too quick okay so basically the way this is set up uh, this repeater here is necessary because you need to be able to supply power to the redstone below there as well as this uh, torch and that is something that repeaters do if you power them if you power a block with it then redstone below will also get powered this repeater needs to be on uh, th 0.3 seconds of delay and then you have another redstone torch below here Put that piston back and then this is your output so that's going to lead to in this case a lamp you could actually also just put the button directly on here, but that's not very practical, so you should just leave a repeater there, so you can also use other things like, for example, I could put a lever here, so every time I pull it twice, it will be, um, it will toggle it. Now, using this, we can actually do some pretty nice stuff. Um, over here I have yet again another door set up and basically we can just use buttons uh, yeah I have the redstone on top of here um, you'd ideally want to hide it of course but we can use uh, two buttons on both sides in order to control the door so you could just press it walk through and use this again to close it now this wouldn't really be too practical with just doors but for example if you were using a piston door that would actually be a pretty good solution so we basically have the redstone under here make sure it does not power the door and you can just have the same wire leading to both buttons because a T flip flop only has one input and you can always toggle it with that same input and then we just have the flip flop here and the output goes along the top to the door now the last thing I'm going to show you this time is something really neat we can do with uh, T flip flops. Um, basically what this is is a binary counter, a 4-bit binary counter. So if you're not aware of what binary is, it is basically a um, numerical system which only has ones and zeros. So in this case, if a lamp is on, that means one, and if a lamp is off, it means zero. So this will basically count to 15, as it is a 4-bit counter. So this block represents uh, 1, so if this is on, it will be 1. This block represents 2, if it's on, it means 2. This one means 4, and this one means 8. That's basically how binary works. It's all powers of 2, so if you were to make a 5-bit counter, then the next one would be 16, and then 32, etc. Um, the way this works is we just have a bunch of T flip flops in a row here and you want the output of, a, of the T flip flop to power the lamp and then you invert that output and that will be the input for the next T flip flop and then you can just repeat that pattern for as much as you want and then you will have a bit counter so if I press this we get one if I press this we get two this turns off again we press it again, we get 2 plus 1, and that's 3. And we press it again, we, this one lights, and the other two turn off, turn off, we have 4. And then 4 plus 1 is 5. And 4 plus 2 is 6. And 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7, and etc. That It will continue all the way up until all four of these are lit, uh, which would mean 15. And then if you press it again, it will turn back to 0. As you can see, if we only had a 3-bit counter, it would now be 0 again, but we have this one, so it is now 8. So yeah, that's a, that's a way you can make a counter, a counting device in Minecraft. There are more efficient ways to do this, but uh, we will not be going over them. 
uh, at least not right now, maybe in the near future. I haven't decided upon that yet. But um, yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys this time. And um, you should be able to do some pretty cool stuff with this. I didn't come up with an exercise for this lesson because there's simply so much you can do with these memory devices. And um, maybe a good exercise for you would be to just create some other sort of puzzle. Like we did last time, we had the combination lock thing. Maybe you could, um, you could for example, create a puzzle where you have to um, uh, hit a bunch of pressure plates in the right uh, order. So it would basically, if you, you could use the RS NOR latch, for example. I'm actually giving away how to do the exercise here, but uh, you could create a setup where you have a bunch of pressure plates and then uh, each pressure plate has a memory cell attached to it and if you press them in the right order then that would set all the memory cells and then you could have those come together in AND gates and you could basically create a puzzle like that and there's lots of other stuff you can do so I really urge you to try it out at least try to replicate these things I've built here see if you understand the concept of all of these gates and uh, yeah then I will see you guys next lesson have a nice day